Clap your hands for Dylan, everybody. Give it up for Dylan. Give Dylan one more time. And one more time for Mike. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Happy. Uh, are, are you celebrating Valentine's or you're not celebrating it tonight? Celebrating it. Yeah. You are celebrating it? Wow, that's our fucking room evenly divided. Take it easy. I, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Last night was like 100% Valentine's Day. The handful of single people that were just fucked. They were fucked, man. They were fucked. I, I'm not like the world's biggest Valentine's guy, but I hate people that hate Valentine's. I, that's the lamest fucking shit that you can do. I know, it's a corporate fucking holiday. Yeah, you can't go, go fuck yourself, man. Just then be quiet. Why don't you shut up today then? Just shut up and let people that love each other love each other and shut the fuck up, you cry, baby. Who gives a shit? Well, I don't need to be told. I don't need to be told when to love my girlfriend. I love her all. Shut the fuck up. You're lazy and shit. Just go to CBS and get something and shut up, cry, baby. Shut up. Just shut up. God, I hate the fucking holiday haters. And Christmas is just shut the fuck up. Then just shut up during it. Just be quiet during it. Just let it fucking happen. It's been around for centuries. Just shut up during Christmas. Shut up. Shut up. I don't get why it makes us all feel sad. Well, fucking don't be sad. How does not every day of the year make you feel sad? They're all fucking, they're just days. Just shut the fuck up. I don't like it. Why do I have to celebrate Jesus and the bunny? And because that's the fucking fucking day it is. That's the day. And if you don't like Jesus, you can just shut up. You don't have to say anything about it. Eat the fucking candy. Just eat the candy. Eat the fucking candy. Every one of these holidays comes with candy. Just eat the fucking candy and shut up. Stop it. Just stop fucking whining about it. Nobody fucking cares. You got to the bottom of the conspiracy theory about the holiday. Way to go. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I hate fucking haters. They're just fucking... <laughs> More people are alone today. <clears throat> Why is alone so bad? Why do people hate alone so much? Fuck. You ever been married? Alone sounds like crack. Oh, I want some of that alone. What's that like? Is that good? You've been alone for a long time? You're super lonely? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. What's it like? What's it like? So nobody talks to you. Nobody. And you're just alone. And you, and you don't do anything with anybody all day. And you can do whatever you want because nobody cares, right? Oh, fuck. What's that like? Is that pretty awesome? So, there, so you're by yourself and you've got nobody. Fuck. Tell me about that. You can just go to bed any time of the day? And you do, you sleep all day because you're so sad. Fuck. That sounds incredible. What a fucking beautiful picture you've painted. You lonely fucker, switch with me. I would like to know some loneliness. I will say that the, the candy on Valentine's Day is not very good. The, it's, the only time the, it's the only time of the year that you ever talk about whipping chocolates. I don't know how they got their fucking brand in on a holiday, but any, any candy that comes with a map to tell you what candy you're eating is not a good, it's not good candy. If they feel the need to identify what you've just taken out of your mouth. Oh, oh, what the fuck is that? What is that? What is that? It's fucking pralines and spider. There's spider in this. There's spider in this. I had one earlier with a coin. It had a coin in it. Yeah, like a penny, like a straight fucking penny, dude. It was nougat and pennies. Fucking get that shit. What am I your, did you, am I your grandma? What did you buy this for me for? Oh, man. No, thank you. That's breakup chocolate, man. That's just like, 
I hate to tell you, but I got your box of some Whitman chocolates. Oh, it's over. It's over. I'd be alone. Nobody really ever gets mad about St. Patty's Day, though. Oh, I'll get fucked up. We're getting fucked up. I'll get fucked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I don't even know I'm not Irish either. I'm German. Straight German, but I'll drink. I'll put on some green. What do we got to do? I'm in. I fucking love St. Patty's Day. Getting a fist fight somewhere? I'm into it. I'm totally into it. I'm totally into it. Do we have any, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sober, I'm a sober person. Do we have any so other sober people here tonight? Any sober people? Uh, shh. You're not supposed to share if you're sober. It's anonymous, remember? I still have my jacket on. And a scarf. I'm not taking them off either. I haven't had them off since I got here on Wednesday. I'm fucking freezing, man. I'm from I'm from Los Angeles, man. This is weak. These these things have never been worn there, so I, I didn't want to take them off. I felt bad. I just good. I'm not wearing the scarf because I need it or that I think it looks cool. I'm wearing the scarf because I'm 56 and I didn't feel like fucking ironing my neck for you. Just <laughs> tie a scarf around it, man. I'm going to try and avoid as many surgeries as possible. Or by just tying scarves around it, I don't care. Big old fucking neck. I don't see how those neck tattoo people don't see that coming. I don't know how they don't see that coming. Have you ever seen an old neck? Look at an old neck, man. You want to draw on those curtains? <laughs> fucking the word player just fucking hang in here. This player. Whoa, wafting in the wind. Player. Player. Misunderstood. Flap, 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 flap. Those neck tattoos are gonna look bad, man. Those neck tattoos. I mean, you put it up on your cheek, okay, your cheek's probably gonna stay about the same, but man, I don't know, your jowls and shit. Post Malone's just gonna look like a big old blue curtain. He's not worried about tomorrow. He's not worried. He's, he's made a lot of money. He can get him taken off if he wants. That's got to fucking hurt. It's got to hurt going on. It's got to hurt even worse taking it off. And then just having a big fucking scar where you don't have a word that looks just like a fucking scar that's the same shape as the word. <laughs> misunderstood. You get that shit? I'm misunderstood. <laughs> I don't know that you're misunderstood now. I know exactly who you are. Yeah, I'm sober. If you're not sober, congratulations. Good for you. Hang in there. Don't lose your privileges. Don't fucking lose your privileges. Don't lose it. Get your shit together. Go to work. Go to work. Don't hit on that girl. It's your friend's wife. Leave her alone. Fucking be sober. Sober up. Sober up. Don't be an asshole. Don't do drunk shit. Don't fucking do it. Keep those, keep those drinking rights. Once you're sober, there's no turning back, man. Some sober people will try and make it seem like it's great. I've been sober for a while. I've met a lot of those people. They try to make it seem like it's fucking better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, now? Now that I'm sober? Now? Yeah, I have more fun. No, I have more fun, dude. Fuck, dude, you're not listening. You don't seem like you have more fun. I have more fun, dude. I'm more fun. I'm a more fun person. That's how they sound. I'm more fun. Fuck, I'm not. 
I'm way not more fun, man. I am not somebody you want to hang out with, man. There's nothing more fun about being sober. I'm not more fun. I'm not better to hang out with. I'm not cool. I'm uptight. I'm intense. When I was fucked up, I was fun to be with, man. I was fucking fun to be with. And I would do all kinds of shit. I like to party. I like to go hard, man. I like to have the kind of fun where you don't remember how much fun you had because you had so much fun. You had so much fun, you blacked out. I was having an abundance of fun. And it caused me to black out. And I don't remember what I did, but I know it was fun. Like, I like it if you started at the beach and then when you woke up, you were in the desert. Like, that's how I like to... Oh, fuck, these are Joshua trees, man. Look at this shit. Where are we? Look where we are. Do I know you? No. Okay, cool. Do we have a car? We don't have a car. Okay, so we're walking. All right, I'm just trying to get my bearings. And it's got to be midweek, right? Yeah, it's a Wednesday. Fuck. Fuck. And I started Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's how I like to do it. That's a little dangerous. I was a much more interesting person. I just was cooler. I was a collector of things. I would collect things when I got fucked up. I would bring things home. Not just people, I don't mean people. Sometimes people would come home with me, but more often than not, just stuff. At one point in my apartment, my buddy and I, we had four Ottomans. Four Ottomans, four footstools, footstools. You know what Ottoman in? Footstool, we'd fucking stolen four fucking Ottomans. There was only two of us and one couch. Four fucking footrests, dude. I love to put it up. We had fucking rescued four foot from like hotels. We must have stolen out of fucking hotel lobbies. We took fucking footstools, brought them home. That's how I fucking roll, dude. That's what my tattoo would say, fucking Ottoman. <laughs> What's up, bitch? You don't want to play with me, dude. I'll fucking steal a footstool. You can handle that shit, but that's what's happening tonight, so. We're headed over to the Crown Plaza. I used to come home with stuff. This story was retold to me, but one time. <laughs> yep, my friend David, he told me. We were living together, my buddy David and I. Uh, I came home with uh, f four four traffic cones four traffic cones have you ever even just had one traffic cone like in your house they're fucking huge they're huge they're a lot one traffic cone's a lot of traffic cone to have just sitting in your house fucking four of them i brought four home i brought them home which means the only way i could have brought them home is if i fucking stacked them two aside like an inverted lobster And the reason I brought him home was I had recently been through a breakup. And so uh, I took the four cones and I put them on the one side of the bed where my girlfriend used to be. <laughs> this area is under construction. <laughs> you gotta go around, dude. I got a flag. I'm waving you around. You gotta go around. You gotta go around. Nobody can go here. Shit's all broken. It's all broken. It's ruined. You gotta redo it. Put some cones up. I'm gonna sleep next to cones. <laughs> I also used to wake up with sandwiches in my pocket. <laughs> full sandwiches, full whole sandwiches that I had made. I had made them, saran wrapped them, and then took them to go in my pants. <laughs> sandwiches. I party optimistically. I'm like, we're going to get fucked up. We may end up in the desert. I'm going to get a sandwich. It's Wednesday now. <laughs> By Sunday, this thing should be cooked. <laughs> yeah. They slow cook in your pants. If you put a sandwich in your pants, the cheese will melt eventually. You slow cook it. Yeah. Yeah, you're just walking around, just slow cooking a sandwich. It's a good way to cook it. It's nice. It gets a good melt. Yeah. Microwave. Microwave. 
I made that up. Thackerwave. Made that up myself. Thackerwave. Sandwich. One time, I will use the phrase, came to. One time I came to from a blackout. Well, it wasn't necessarily a blackout. We had taken peyote. As they mentioned earlier, I went to college down the road here uh, in the early 80s. That is a, that's a good school. Seventy percent accepted rate. <laughs> if you're a warm body from out of state, you're in. You're fucking in. Are you alive? Yeah. Come on to University of Oregon. Come on over to our campus. Enjoy your access to drugs. An incredible college. It's an incredible institution. Super. I am genuinely proud to have been a student there. But anyway, when I was at college. A bunch of us went out to the beach, and I had a 79 Ford Bronco. And, uh, and when I came to, <laughs> four of us were in said Bronco driving into the ocean. <laughs> Intentionally driving in. We were driving into the ocean with the plan. We'd rolled the windows up with the plan of going in the water. That's how fucked up we were. We were gonna go in and everyone was into it. And a lot of people say, man, that makes you sound really fucked up. And I say, does it? Or does it make me sound like somebody with leadership qualities? Cause I got three other dudes to die with me. I got three other dudes to get in a car and go into the ocean with me. Cause I said we should do it. That's leadership. I can't get fucking four people to follow me on Instagram. It's Gregor's, in case you're interested. That's, it's Gregor's is my Instagram. It's Gregor's. It's Gregor's. Hey, Gregor's. What 56-year-old fucking man calls himself Gregor's? Jesus Christ. God, I got a lot of problems. A man that wrote an amazing book. A man that wrote an amazing book. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. I'll mention that in a little bit. I'll bring it up. Will you sign it? Will I sign the book if you have it? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, after, after the show, probably better, better, best time. <laughs> That'll be the best, best time to do it. <laughs> but happy to do it. Happy to, I'm sure. A lot of you guys may not know this. I wrote the Da Vinci Code. Dashed it off, just had some thoughts about the church and just put them down. Uh, I wrote a book called He's Just Not That Into You, and, uh, into you and I'll talk to, you about it, talk to you about that later. And I, oh, no, 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 sorry. No, no, no. That's super kind. But anyway, I eventually, uh, I eventually, I eventually sobered up because uh, people won't go to the beach with you again. <laughs> you know, they won't go a second time. That's all real fun and everything. But they're not going to go back with you. You find you know, less and less people want to have those adventures with you, and you find yourself with some pretty shitty company. And uh, and uh, so I got sober in my thirties, and uh, I don't know if you know anything about getting sober, but. Uh, when you get sober, you're, it's, you're, you start feeling your feelings and shit for the first time, where before you covered them up with alcohol and drugs, and then now you gotta feel them. So it's like joining the human race late. Because <laughs> you don't know how to do it like everybody else knows how to do it, and you're just fucking struggling, and, and everything is real, and like, your senses come back almost, like it's almost like your senses were gone. Like you can smell shit, you're aware of things. Like before you weren't really fucking aware of things, all of a sudden you're going, fuck, what is that? What the fuck is that? Is that our carpet? Does that our carpet smell like that? Jesus, fuck, it smells like two eggs came in here and took a shit. No, two sentient eggs came in and shat on the floor. That's what it smells like in here. That's how fucking horrible it is. If eggs could shit, that's what it smells like. Two sentient eggs.
I remember I, I, I played music in co- and, I, and I played music in college and I played in bands. I played in punk bands. But I remember going to my first concert sober and going, fuck, this is loud. Why is this so loud? Jesus. This is loud. Is this loud? It's loud. Yeah, get off of me. Ew, gross. Get off of me. I don't like, oh, I don't like people. I, ew, just sticky and shit. Get off. Ugh. Oh, loud. Get off me. Ugh. See, I'm less fun. People are complicated, man. Fuck, man. When you're sober, people are really complicated. Fuck. They also want to talk. And they want you to listen, and then you're supposed to talk, and they listen, and then everyone's got feelings they're all worried about. Jesus Christ. Everybody's like, man, my feelings. are like, oh, please, what is happening? We used to just get, scream at each other and go in the ocean. And now... We could have a 20 minute fucking conversation about where we're gonna eat pizza. I don't, I don't like it at all. <laughs> Human beings are so, they can be so complicated. And they're not really complicated. They make complicated situations out of really simple ones. That's just how they are. You know what's really difficult sober is sex. Oh boy, man, that's a whole other thing. I don't know how people fucking do it. <laughs> Really do it. Really let themselves go. I don't know that I've ever really let myself go like when I drank. You know what I mean? When I'm when I have sex, you know, like when I have sex now, I'm like, oh fuck the lights. Come on, let's go quicker. Let's, don't stand so far away. Just look at me from closer. Don't see me from all the way across the room. <laughs> Being naked is a hassle, man. I don't like it. I don't like it. Man. I like to put more shit on. I don't be naked. No. <laughs> And I like people who talk dirty during sex. How do you do that sober? Man, I don't know. Because I would do it, I used to do it in the old days, and I would never start it. I could never start it. Even when I was fucked up, I could never start dirty. I could never do it. I was always afraid that I, it would upset somebody. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be like, you would say something, you would be like, I can't even do it now. I can't do it. You just spent a lot of time going, that's not what I meant to say, that's not what I meant, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that, I didn't mean that, no, 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 I didn't mean that, not like that, I didn't mean it like that, I thought that was sexy, is it not, I'm sorry. I just thought that if that's something you wanted to do, but you don't have to, we just, it was just an idea that I was thinking of, but I, didn't, I really actually don't even want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't, I don't want that, I don't want that. When I, when I got sober, the second girl that I had sex with was, was, uh, was uh, I'm not going to call her dirty because that almost sounds reductive. She was provocative and she had ideas. And, <laughs> and, she, and she framed them in demands. <laughs> and so she demanded something of me and uh, she said something sexy and dirty to me. And then... Uh, and I wanted to respond, and I didn't really know what to, I was nervous. And I just said, I brought this. <laughs> yes, I said, I brought, th- I brought this, is what I said to her. I brought this. <laughs> Who the fuck, I brought this. It was like, I'd been invited to a potluck. <laughs> I, like, I, brought, I brought a covered dish. I brought a, I brought a covered dish, if you like, casserole. I brought a casserole if everybody likes that. That'd be good. I got plates. You want a casserole in you? A casserole. The worst. The worst. You know what, uh, I had this experience a little while ago and it made me think, you know, for as many people as there are in the world, and there's a bajillion of us, you don't hear people fucking that much. (laughs) You just don't, you don't hear it, man. You don't, you think you'd hear it. I hear people fucking blow their lawns and then you go out there and their lawn's been blown and you hear them. <laughs> But you never want to hear people fucking babies just show up. 
There's all kinds of rabies, and you never hear fucking. That's what, because we, you know why? And, and the thing is, because when you do hear it, you're always surprised, right? It's always like, hey, shh, shh, shh. But it, it, no, 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 shh, but, oh, it, You're always surprised, a little delighted. It's exciting. Somebody's fucking, it gives you hope. You could be fucking someday. I might be fucking someday. Someday I might be fucking. Listen, that sounds amazing. Sounds like they're really uh, enjoying it. Or are they? Let's listen. Now, he hasn't got much of a rhythm. No, I don't think this is going to end in an orgasm. It's just a lot of hassle now. But I bring this up because uh, uh, it's, it's been about a year now, but, but about, about, about a year ago, uh, I heard our, uh, our, our, our back gate neighbor uh, have, have, having sex. And uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, and it, she, her house is far. Like it's our house and then a lawn and then her lawn and then her house. So she's a ways away. And, uh, and I heard her, she was fucking at 6.40 in the morning, and I know it's 6.40 because I looked at my clock because I woke up to the sound of fucking. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't fucking, and I thought, I, I'm not fucking. What time is it? It's 6.40, who fucks at 6.40? Like that's an absolute dead zone. Nobody fucks at 6.40. That's an insane time, and they were, and they were, to be fair, they were fucking, they weren't, they, nobody was making love. This was, this was fucking. <laughs> and it was loud, and, and, uh, and I won't imitate it because it, 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 it it'll be reductive. I don't want to, I don't want to insult those people, but, but, but they, it was loud, and I just thought, fuck, man, if I can hear it, what's it like in the room? <laughs> And my, I immediately got empathetic for whoever was fucking her. I thought, that's got to be hard for them. That's got to be hard right now. Because you know, really, the whole point of having sex with somebody is to make them have an orgasm, right? Isn't it the basic idea? I'm going to make you have an orgasm. Maybe you'll make me have an orgasm. But that's the idea. We set out to do, be of service to our partner. That's the plan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have sex with you, and you're going to come. That's the idea. And you know if you've ever had sex with a woman, that, uh, yeah, that doesn't always happen. So when you, when you, when you find something that's working, you stay on it. You know what I mean? You get there, you go, okay, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, just keep doing this, just keep doing this, just keep doing this, keep doing this, I just gotta keep doing this, just this, just keep doing this, the same rhythm, the same beat, just keep doing it, nope, just longer, keep going, no, nope, keep going. You know, this is not even the beginning yet. Just keep going. You just gotta keep, you just gotta stay right here. Just keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Oh God, don't cramp. Please don't cramp. Please don't cramp. Don't make me cramp. I know it's hard. I know I'm not, you know, stay hard. Stay hard. Stay hard. I'm thinking about it too much, but I'm just trying to get there. I'm just trying to get there. I'm just trying to... No, thank you. That's silly. But it is just, just. So I kept thinking, this guy is having sex with this woman. There's no way he can't be thinking to himself, how fucking loud is this? <laughs> you know, and, and I'm listening. Well, the whole fucking neighborhood. We're all, the whole neighborhood. We're all rooting for him. We're all rooting for him. <laughs> I wish I'd gone to my window to look out to see the, the, the hey, man. Yeah, yeah. Go her, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gonna get it. All right, here's the one. This is the one. This is the one. Bring it home, buddy. We're with you, man. We are with you. Hang in there. Keep it steady. Keep it steady. Atta boy. <laughs> and, uh, and by all accounts, she had an orgasm. It, she, it made all of the requisite sounds. You know, it peaked. 
It went higher and higher. And then she did the thing, and it, you could only know if you were there. But when a, when a woman had, in my experience, and again, this is my experience, your experience might be different. My experience, when a woman has an orgasm, she, there's a point in which the vocal dynamics all stop, stop dead. When a woman really comes, she, and then it gets fucking dead quiet, dead quiet. Like dead calm, like you think she might be dead. Like it gets that kind of. It's quiet. And there's a gap in which you're just sort of still, you know, you don't, nobody's giving you any direction, so you're still. And then there's a shuddering, like a shudder. Like a shake, there's a shake, there's an intern, there's a shake, like a, like a tremor. And then they either laugh or cry incongruously. And then go, get off, get off, get off, okay, you're done. Okay, done, you're done, you're done now, you're good, you're done, stop, 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 stop. That's good, that's good, that's good, enough, 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 I got it. Yeah, 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 you made your point. You made your point. You did it. And you know, if, 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 if none of this sounds familiar, you know, just stay at it. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. Hi, how are those chocolates going? No, 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 I can't take a risk like that. Oh, no, no, no. Is it, I love to hear about it. Yeah. Oh, I have to share with my wife. Oh, well, share it with your wife then. You just did that in front of your wife. No, no, no. I don't want to get in the middle of this. I know, I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, how long have you guys been married? It's our third year. It's our third year. It's your third year? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it all seems so great. What's that? There's more? I tried men, it was not for me. Oh, you tried men and it wasn't for you? Yeah, well, thank God you found out. <laughs> thank, God for the, thank God for her and thank God for yeah. the guy you were... Yeah. But you tried men. <laughs> I got two kids, so... Oh, you have two kids? Oh, you really tried men. <laughs> oh, you really tried to make that work. Good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Holy shit, you really did try to see if this works. I think I like, I think I like this guy, but I'm not positive. No, you don't. I had a baby. I had a baby, but I'm not feeling that great. I still like women, but I'm gonna keep trying. And I think I still like women. Well, congratulations. I hope you're, how old are your kids? Um, they are 16 and 17. Oh, 16 and 17, oh wow. You had them, you were like, you really tried again. I'm certain I like you somehow. <laughs> I have um, uh, Kids? daughters. <laughs> so they're, they're not that tall. Uh, I don't know why I do that. I don't know what that. I don't even know what that means. I don't know why I had to put my hand up here. I have two. I would never touch them by the heads. Anyway, if I I do have daughters, but I don't grab them like this. I've learned a lot of things in life. Don't grab people by the head. They don't, nobody likes it. No one likes it. Yeah, I have two. Uh, one of them's nice. Daughters. <laughs> 17 and 14 are their names. <laughs> yeah. No, they're they're good. They're 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 good. Uh, uh, parenting was much much more uh, difficult than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> just more complicated. It's just more. It didn't look like much when I was a kid. <laughs> you know what I'm you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, my day parenting was not the, the fucking, the demands of a parent now are fucking, it's, you're like, it's like being a university president or something. Jesus Christ, you got a shit ton of responsibility when I was a kid. Nobody, people, even, people didn't even like kids. They had them and didn't like them. You're really supposed to be involved now. You gotta really get involved with your kids. How many people have kids? How many people have kids? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a pretty good, good, pretty good chunk of you. Yeah. If you don't, congratulations. I have, uh, I have actually, I know quite a few uh, married people without kids and uh, and around my age, and what they have right now is money. And it is so attractive. Uh, the money they have is so adorable. Uh, God, I envy the second house that they're having and their guitar collection and their trips to Italy. That's got to, uh, that's got to, I'm so glad I had kids. You just gotta really be involved. They really want you to be involved with your kids. You gotta ask them a lot of questions now. The old days, and they, but they, now you gotta ask them, like, everything good? You can check in with them. Everything good? You like your, you, you like your uh, backpack? And, uh, <laughs> I'm trying here. Uh, 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 do you like your name? Uh, you can, if, you, if, you, if you don't, you can change it. We don't really care. Uh, and uh, also your uh, gender is uh, whatever. It's up to you, really. <laughs> Uh, at any point of the day. It can be uh, fluid, as they say. Uh, just let us know what pronoun we're using so that we don't fuck up. Uh, we just want to be, want to just be in touch with you and uh, I hope that you're happy. I'm a, a dad or, or Greg. You, you can go either, either, either one of those. And uh, of course, your mom, that's your mom in the, in the, uh, in the kitchen. Uh, but she's not from the, she's not in the kitchen because she's a woman. She's not from the kitchen. She's just in the, she happens to be in the kitchen now, but she has a job, she has her own job. She's a writer. She does her own things. She's not, she's a full-blown person. <laughs> we both do the laundry, so... It... <laughs> Just want to make sure your experience is going good. It's like being in the fucking food service industry. <laughs> Just want to make sure everything's going good and you're enjoying your stay here. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I've got a... Uh, yeah, I'd love it. Uh, if you'd fill out this uh, survey and my manager uh, <laughs> would love to buy you a drink. And... Uh, <laughs> Fuck, so many questions. Are you okay? You doing okay? Do you have friends, you know? Do you like your friends? Have you made friends? Do you have friends? Do you want friends? Do you need friends? <laughs> and just basically, are you all right? Nobody ever asked me if how I was doing. Nobody ever fucking, did anyone ever ask you how you were doing? Nobody ever asked me how the fuck I was doing. If my dad had walked into my bedroom and made eye contact with me and said, everything okay? I would have been like, yeah, fuck, is everything okay with you? What are you doing? What's that, what are you doing? Stop that, stop. Just don't, just don't look at me. Don't look, not in my eyes. What are you doing? This is weird. What are you doing? Get out, I'm just trying to masturbate, man. Get out of here. Why are you interested? My parents were, were not, the only, question I, the only question I can tell you for sure that I was asked and I remember being asked this quite a bit, was, why are you in here? <laughs> that was the only question I can remember from my youth. Why are you in here? Oh, fuck, I don't know. I, do I not belong here? Get out. Go outside. Like, yeah. My generation was just, we were just made to go outside. You just had to go outside. Go outside. Just go outside. Take your friends and get the fuck outside. Everybody, all the kids, everyone in the neighborhood, it was all, all the kids were outside, we were all outside. We were, nobody was allowed in the house. <laughs> just fucking wandering around, out, you outside? Yeah, why? I don't know, I, just, I, I gotta be outside. I'm just, where I'm supposed to be. Everybody was outside, we were all the fuck outside. <laughs> they didn't give a fuck, man. They didn't, my kids haven't been to the edge of the yard yet. Watch them like hawks. They've never been anywhere. <laughs> Fuck, I think most of our parents were hoping some of us just wouldn't come back. 
Yeah, yeah he's, uh, the Henderson's got a uh, ref- old refrigerator you can go play in. Why don't you go check that out? See how that's going. Oh, and your mom left some dry cleaning bags on your bed if you want to play with those later on. <laughs> they did not give a fuck, man. <laughs> Go outside. Yeah, now... We didn't have very good... Our, to- our toys were shitty, too. <laughs> toys are so good now, man. Just even fucking... Even this shit on your phone... I know it's been around for a while now, but man, if I had gotten Candy Crush <laughs> when I was 18, it would have blown my fucking mind. It would have blown, it would have blown my fucking head off. My head would have exploded. I wouldn't have been able to understand it. it, like, it like it's magical compared to the shit we have. Yo-yo, a fucking yo-yo. <laughs> The slinky, a fucking slinky. That's just sketch. I fucking, I can't make a circle. I don't know how to work. I can't make a circle. I don't know. It's a fucking weird European computer. I don't know what this is. Most of the shit was new and experimental, and if you didn't buy something brand named, you're in trouble. If you bought a fucking bike from a department store, chances were it was gonna fucking split in half and go through you. <laughs> go off a curb. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, people were bleeding all the time when I was a kid. People were always bleeding. People were always going to the hospital and getting stitches. Fuck. And toys would just fall apart, skateboarders would just dissolve. You'd just be like. <laughs> And then you'd be done, you know, you'd be done playing with your fucking four toys early. And then (laughs) there was nothing to do. So you'd put a knife in a pillow and then everybody would want you to go outside. (laughs) (laughs) Go outside. They used to, I don't think they do it anymore, but in the, you know, we used to, one of the things that was required of you as a kid was to build a tree fort. <laughs> Parents would allow their kids to go into trees with lumber, <laughs> take a lumber and tools into a tree, <laughs> and then figure out how they could make a foundation in branches for a small house. <laughs> Architects can't do that. Here, take this saw. That'll be good. Nobody's going to get hurt. Yeah, it was very free range. Other people's parents could parent you, too. Other people's parents could tell you what the fuck to do. That's amazing, man. You can't even look at another kid... You look at somebody else's kids, you can get sued. You gotta be careful, man. I barely talk to the other kids when they come over to the house. I'm like, I don't wanna get any trouble. I don't wanna say anything. (laughs) Well, yeah, other people's fucking, any adult, anybody that was adult could yell at you. Hey, 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 get off of there. (laughs) Fuck, man, you're the postman. (laughs) What are you doing in the basement, dude? I feel like I've seen you a lot lately. (laughs) And I don't know if it's good or bad. I don't know if it's better now or it's worse now. I don't know if it's better now. I mean, I definitely have some scars and some, some stories to tell. You know, I did some dumb fucking shit and I had to go to the hospital a bunch of times. I mean, that's just me, but... But I, but I feel like those adventures were good for me in a way. And I don't want harm to befall my kids, but Jesus Christ, when we had them, we, uh, we did this thing called baby proofing, when you baby proof your house, and it isn't to make it so that it doesn't have babies. <laughs> it 
It's so that they don't get hurt. You gotta take the edges off of anything. Anything with a corner, you gotta shave it off. Like, you gotta fucking put, you gotta nail all the drawers shut. You gotta take the fucking, you got a second floor? Take it down, take it fucking down. You got a basement? Close that shit up. Put up fences and then lay sleeping bags all over the house and then everybody lays on the floor until they're 13. Nobody's getting hurt! Nobody! Nobody gets hurt or goes outside or has an experience. Fuck. Baby proof the house. I hope my kids turn out okay. They seem okay. I mean, they're nice. They're both, they're both, they're both pretty, they're both, one of them smart. They're both smart. I, do, I, do, I dropped one. Yeah. I didn't even drop her. I flipped her. Well, we didn't know how it was going to turn out for her. Right? Oh, wow. Every parent has done some fucked up thing to their child by accident. Every parent has, and if your parents didn't tell you a story, they're just lying to you, that's all. <laughs> Everybody's been dropped or had their head accidentally slammed into something. You know? <laughs> Sat in their own shit for seven or eight hours. <laughs> some things sometimes are just unavoidable and sometimes you just, sometimes you fucking, if you're a person that's clumsy, and forgetful, having a child doesn't make you not clumsy and forgetful. <laughs> it just makes the consequences dire. <laughs> I, f I, I flipped. Okay, I'm so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell I'm gonna admit this. When my oldest was, th was three, we were on the road, we were in Seattle, and I was doing stand-up, and my wife was with me, and, uh, and she was taking a nap, and so my daughter and I were playing in the hallway of the hotel, and we'd uh, invented this game. I had taken a towel, and I, you know, I whipped it up so it was like, looked like a rope, right? And I made a little lasso, and uh, <laughs> she would start running down the hall, and then I'd... <laughs> and fucking pull her up in the air like roped cattle. <laughs> fucking swing. And she fucking loved it. It was great. <laughs> Fuck, it was great. And you know, when you're, when, you're the, when, you're, when you're a dad and you have a three-year-old, you don't get the same kind of quality time that mom gets, so it's exciting when you find something to do together. And we did this like 70 times. <laughs> Couldn't have been more fun. Couldn't have been more fun. She was giggling. It was, it was a miracle. And then I said to my wife, hey, you gotta come out here and see this. <laughs> if you were reading a script, you wouldn't believe it. You would just be like, no asshole, nobody does that. My wife comes out, she'd been napping. <laughs> you know, she'd been asleep, which is her favorite way to be around me. <laughs> That's how she likes me best. <laughs> and I said, watch. And my daughter, whose name is True, her name's True. True started running down the hall. And I got too excited and I threw the towel early. <laughs> and instead of going around her waist, it went around her feet. <laughs> but it was too late because I was already yanking. <laughs> and I flipped her. I think she did a whole revolution and then onto her skull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. It's as bad as you could think, it's bad, it was bad. It was as bad as a thing can be bad. Like I saw my whole life in prison as it was happening. I was like, oh, I go to prison for this. I go to prison for this.
And she smacked her head on the floor. And my wife said, leave. Which I did, I just left. Because I think she didn't want to have to explain to the police why we were both dead. And the doctor came and took a look at my baby and she was fine. He said she was fine. She had a red bruise. He said she's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. You know, keep her awake for a while. You know, babies' heads when they're small, they're like Indian rubber. You know, they're soft. And I mean, come on, look how many of us there are. If they were made out of China, we'd all be dead. But then things happen later in life and you don't know if that wasn't your fault or not. Like one time we were on an airplane, she was 11, true, and she had a seven up and it was warm. And the flight attendant said, would you like to have a cup of ice with that? And she said, yes, I would. And then the flight attendant brought a cup of ice and then my daughter sat and stared at the two, the cup and the can for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Which was really tough. And made it even tougher by the fact that then she took an ice cube and tried to put it through the top of the can. <laughs> Three times. One, two. And I was like, that's my fault. That's my fault. That's... I did that. I did that. I'm the one that did that. You are a superior crowd. What a great crowd you are. Thank you so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you one last, last story here. Um, as a, as, as a, oh, I have, I don't sell anything after the show, but I, if you're like, God, I need more Greg Barron, uh, which I don't think any of you probably are. But, but, we were like, does he have a podcast? I do. It's a self-help podcast, and it's called Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. Yep, and it's on iTunes. So check that out. We answer questions. We help people out. And uh, that's my main function in life right now is helping people out. And, uh, and, uh, and, then, it, and then it's Gregor's over on uh, Instagram. That's all you really need to know. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, website uh, which is uh, gregorybarron.com. Uh, fullgregorybarron.com and uh, you won't go there but if you did <laughs> and you subscribed you would get a meditation and that meditation is called Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers uh, and it is a full meditation with swearing in it it's awesome you haven't meditated like this before <laughs> years ago I, I'm going to tell this really quickly but the story goes like this uh, I, was, uh, I was a writer, I was a consultant on the show Sex and the City. Uh, the executive producer was an old stand-up buddy of mine, and, uh, the, and he asked me to come work on the show because the staff was seven women and two gay men. He was, he was gay, and he said, uh, we need a straight guy to come over here. Uh, and and, and uh, Dallas, that guy doesn't need a purse. And... Uh, <laughs> But as it turns out, he could have a purse. And, uh, and uh, so I, I worked on that show for uh, f five of its six seasons. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was a great job. And in the final season, uh, I was on a lunch break having a cookie. And, uh, <laughs> and one of the girls that worked there came up and said, hey, I have a relationship problem I'd love to run by you. And because uh, the girls all liked me, in my opinion. And I said, sure. And she said, I've been seeing a guy for a while, and uh, they'd gone on like 10 dates, and she invited him up to have sex the night before, and he, he took a pass. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you, you get it already, but she didn't, she didn't get it already. And she said, do you think that's bad? And then I stared at her for 15 minutes. No. 
and then finally, and then finally I said, yes, I, I think that's bad. And then she got defensive and said, oh, well, he had, to, he had to get up and work. And I said, I don't care if he had to get up and fly the goddamn space shuttle. <laughs> when you like somebody in that way, you want to have sex with them and you figure it out. Right? That's just how it is. When you love somebody, right? When you love somebody, you love somebody. Yep. And you want to touch them and shit and, 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 and do things with their naked parts. And <laughs> that's part of the whole fun of the whole thing. So that... Uh, there was a girl who was with us at the time uh, named Liz Tuchillo, and she thought that was a cool idea, and we put it into an episode, and then Liz said we should write a book, and I said a pamphlet maybe, and uh, <laughs> didn't seem like it was enough for a whole book. <laughs> but we wrote a whole book, and then, uh, and then we went on, and then I got to go on the Oprah Winfrey show, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and then, in, and, uh, and then after Oprah aired, I became an international relationship guru. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Fuck, I was having a cookie. But I do, but I do like helping people out with their shit. And uh, but I used to get a lot of, um, I used to get a lot of uh, emails from single women, and they were always very sad. And they would say that they hated being single. You know, as we talked about earlier tonight. Uh, you know, when you tell somebody who's been married for twenty years that you're sad because you're single. One girl said, I just wish I had somebody to spend my Sundays with. And all I wanted to say back was, fuck, you have a free Sunday? What's that like? <laughs> God damn it, sleep in, order a pizza, masturbate, make it yours. Make that your day, your free Sunday. And, uh, because you get married and you do married stuff and look, being married is beautiful and, and I wouldn't trade it for the world, but, but it's not cool. <laughs> Nothing cool about it. It's not a cool thing. You're not cool anymore. You do married shit with married people and that's not cool. It's for squares. <laughs> we got roped into fucking game night one night. Game night. Yeah, you guys, I'm sure you're all familiar. Everyone's been down that fucking path and, 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 you, and you will be again soon. There's only so many things you can do with other couples. <laughs> Game night. God damn it, what a fucking bummer. That was... <laughs> Pictionary is the work of the devil. That is... A... Man, I wish I'd played that before I got married. I would have made some other choices. <laughs> well, you want to figure out what you're like in a relationship, just play Pictionary with your partner. That'll fucking tell you all you need to know. First off, the game shouldn't even be called Pictionary. It should be called, here's what I would have drawn, because that's what fucking people say. <laughs> well, here's what I, well, you weren't fucking draw. I don't want to hear what you have to say. It's over. I don't want to know. I don't fucking, don't tell me now. It's over. I don't want to know what you would have drawn. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with people? I never, I just had, you know, the thing about it was I just hadn't played until I got married. I, I knew what the game was. It's been around for centuries. But I, I hadn't played it. But I knew, I, but I, so I just assumed because it was called Pictionary that you got to draw pictures of shit that you could draw. <laughs> you know, like kind of, like, like Ottoman. Yeah? Yeah. Fucking footstool. Right? Put that shit up there. That's my shit right there. That's my shit. I like when people say, that's my shit. That's my shit right there. <laughs> I also like it when people say, I had, the other morning I went, I went, I love this phrase. I wish, I, I, I'm going to start saying it more. I went to breakfast with the manager of the club, general manager, Nick. And uh, he, he said to me, uh, you fuck with biscuits and gravy? <laughs> I 
That's the greatest thing anyone's ever said to me. You fuck with biscuits and gravy? Of course I, yes, I fuck with biscuits and gravy. Fuck yeah, you fuck with biscuits and gravy. I fuck with biscuits and gravy. You bet I would. I would fuck with biscuits and gravy. I would fuck some biscuits and gravy. I, yes, I would. You fuck, you fuck with biscuits and gravy. It's the best way to ask somebody if they want to go get biscuits and gravy. You fuck with biscuits and gravy? Yeah, yeah, okay. The fucking greatest. We fuck with some biscuits and gravy, man. I just thought you would draw pictures of shit that you could draw. The first word that I got to draw, fucking few. What? Few. F-E-W, few. A f- like a few. How the fuck do you, what, how? How do you draw a few and get somebody to guess a few? How many is a few do you think? How many? Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought too. Three. So I draw three circles. And I'm getting nothing from my wife. Nothing. Not even, not even, she's not even speaking. She just goes. And I don't fucking ever want to see that face again. I mean, it's not like what I was doing was it, because I was, I was going like. And then I realized, like, fuck, dude, you haven't drawn anything. Like, what is she supposed to guess? What is that? So then I thought, oh, wait, what if I draw many circles? I'll contrast them. I'll draw many circles, and so they'll have many and a few. Many circles and a few circles. Many and a few. And I see her eyes light up and I'm like, here we go, baby. And she goes, grapes. (laughs) Fuck me running, they look just like grapes. (laughs) Comes my turn to draw again and I get the word dry. (laughs) What's your deal, man? What's your deal? You can't find a noun for me? (laughs) People come up to me, even though I've said I don't like it, and tell me what they would draw for dry. I have people all the time. (laughs) I didn't ask. Dude came up to me one time and went, hey dude, why don't you draw the desert? And I thought, oh, aren't you clever? Oh, the desert. Let me tell you something, friend. If you draw the desert, people are gonna say, sand, sun, cactus, desert, the desert, that's the desert. You draw the desert, the desert, desert. You know what they're not going to mention? The arid condition of. (laughs) Fucking people, man. One time somebody said, why don't you draw a dryer? And I have to say that honestly, at first I thought about a dryer. And then the problem was, I was like, okay, I'll draw a square, but then I don't know if the circle goes on the front or on the top. I just didn't have that much experience with dryers at that point. I know now. But I didn't need anybody's fucking help. Because what I drew should have been in the goddamn Pictionary Hall of Fame. I drew little waves with little droplets on it, and then a circle with a slash. And my wife says, no water. (laughs) 
but she refuses to take it any further than that. No water. And she, and she says, it, says it again. No water. No water. And then she takes a tone with me. And I think we can all agree that in relationships, obviously, we use words to communicate. It's one of the ways we communicate using words. But words by themselves are meaningless. Unless we crack open a big can of tone and put some tone, put some tone on there. Let's paint some tone on those words. Let's tone those babies up with some tones, some nice tones. And each one of those tones has its own name, its own flavor. And my wife is using a tone from her palate that says, I am disappointed in you as a person. <laughs> and that tone sounds a little bit like this. Can I use you for a second? Yeah. I don't know what <laughs> that is. So I start crying. <laughs> and as, as the last few granules of sand make their way through the minute glass, she just starts saying, draw something else over and over again. Just draw, something, draw something else, draw something else, draw something else, draw something else, just rhythmically, just draw something else, draw something else, draw something else. Draw something else, draw something else. It's like I'm having a fucking meltdown draw something else and finally I just go fuck if I could draw something else don't you fucking think I would are you under the fucking impression that I like this I want to stab myself in the face with a golf pencil And you can't draw something else, so what do you do? What do you do? You draw the same thing fucking harder. <laughs> Darker. <laughs> I love my wife, but during a game of functionaries, I now call it. <laughs> I can see us having different lives. So if you are lucky enough to be in a relationship, congratulations. Good luck. And if you're not in a relationship, let me just say this to you. I get it. I get that it's sad. I get that it's hard. I'm empathetic. But I just want you to know that if on some Friday or Saturday night you're at home alone and you're sad for yourself and you feel blue, just know that across town in a car is a couple driving home like this. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I love you. Have a good night.